Let's bring in Carrie Irvine. She has been in the courtroom most days uh, down there in lower Manhattan. Good morning to you, Carrie. Good morning. What is your reaction to this? I mean, and what can we believe? He, you know, he's been disbarred. He's been caught in lies. He served time behind bars. Yeah. Can you imagine the culmination of your case being putting a serial liar on the stand after weeks of testimony from witnesses who had nothing but negative things to say about him? I, this, <laughs> this case, this prosecution, it just, it's a disaster at this point. I, the witnesses, I think, have backfired from Stormy Daniels to Madeline Westerhouse, who uh, broke down on the stand yesterday crying, saying that Donald Trump has been treated unfairly. And even people who were put there to effectively say something negative about him also said good things about him and so this you know I don't see much happening after Michael Cohen takes the stand but we'll see so Carrie one more question before we move fully to Michael Cohen looking back at the testimony of Stormy Daniels uh, you and I have talked we, we had a longer conversation on the yeah. Will Cain show this at this point has very little to do with justice it has very little to do with the proof and evidence and the law. It's really about throwing dirt and slime and emotional effect on the jury. So I'm curious, as you've been in the courtroom, Stormy Daniels' testimony, what, if anything, have you been able to read from the jury's faces? How are they reacting to all of this slime and dirt and stories from Stormy Daniels? You know, I started off earlier in the week thinking Stormy Daniels was the um, most harmful witness to Donald Trump's defense thus far, just because, not because she was describing anything illegal, but because she was providing such salacious detail, which plays into the prosecution's game of conflating dirty with unlawful in the eyes of the jurors. But by the time the afternoon rolled around, and then, of course, yesterday as well, she became hostile. And, and the defense, I thought, pretty effectively drew out three themes, that she's biased. You know, she testified pretty proudly that she hates Trump, that, you know, she would have danced down the street, as she wrote this in a post at some point, if he went to jail, that in another post about flushing him down the toilet. Also, the defense drew out that she's financially motivated. She's obviously made a lot of money off Donald Trump um, and continues to do so, plus the fact that she owes him thousands and thousands thousands of dollars via court order for filing a frivolous lawsuit against him. And by the way, if he were to go to jail, I'm not suggesting that he will, but that benefits her because it makes it even less likely that she'll have to pay at some point. But yet she sat defiantly on the stand talking about how she's going to not follow the order from the Ninth Circuit where she owes him money. So there's no way that plays well with the jury. And then, of course, lastly, what I thought the defense, the defense did pretty effectively was draw out the inconsistencies in her testimony. You know, she went from saying, oh, I don't care about the money, um, making money, I just wanted to get the story out, to, which of course is ridiculous, because she, if she had cared about that, then she wouldn't have turned around and sold her silence to Michael Cohen for $130,000. It's because she couldn't sell it for years, right. and then she saw an opportunity with the Access Hollywood tape. And then, of course, the major inconsistency in her testimony is the fact that she signed a statement saying that she'd never had an affair with Donald Trump. So I think they dismantled everything she was saying pretty well. And I would imagine the jury walked away thinking, you know, maybe that sexual encounter happened, but this woman, while she may be believable on that, is not credible as far as going right. to anything at the heart of the case here. Well, nice to know she had a fallback, which was being a, a medium. Uh, and she <laughs> also thought her house was <laughs> being was... possessed, but it was a possum. Yeah, uh, that was wacky. Okay, I think so. Uh, <laughs> but just looking ahead, do you think Michael Cohen could be on the stand for two weeks? And no. how many, uh, one week, do you think? Oh, I think it's probably two days, three days, most. Both? Because both he, sides? I think so, and here's why. I think, again, it's going to go poorly for the prosecution. Is he going to say uh, damaging things about Donald Trump? Of course he is, because their case hinges on this guy. But as we know, he's lied to court, in the court, he's lied to the media, he's lied to Congress. So what I've seen thus far is when they're trying to draw out these allegedly negative things that happened with negative Trump, with, I'm sorry, with Donald Trump, with these previous witnesses, it ends up halfway through typically going poorly. And I feel like the prosecution starts panicking and realizing this is not exactly what we wanted to do. And then on cross, I, I think what's going to happen is the same thing with Stormy Daniels. They're just going to go and pick apart statement after statement that's inconsistent with what he has said in the past. And again, at the end of the day, for this jury, it's going to come down to Michael Cohen's ver word versus Donald Trump about a bookkeeping, you know, error, so to speak. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, could he be there all week potentially? I suppose. But... I don't see this ultimately right. helping the prosecution. And then the defense takes over, and then closing statements, we could get done by Memorial Day? 
it's possible. And just remember, you know, they'll do direct examination with Michael yeah. Cohen. Then the defense has an opportunity to cross-examine. Then they can do redirect, recross, redirect, re-redirect. So this can go on for some time. But again, I think after Michael Cohen, I can't imagine them having many people left. So yeah, it is yeah. possible that they present closing arguments the week before yeah. Memorial Day. But there's one caveat here, and that is if Donald Trump decides to testify. If that happens, then this case, I think, will take a lot longer because then the direct, uh, I'm sorry, the prosecution will have an opportunity to cross-examine him. And it's a calculation that Donald Trump's really going to have to think through because he may not want to open the door right. to all mm -hmm. these kinds of questions from the prosecution I that they would normally wouldn't be allowed to that. ask. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be I, no way. I don't way. think he'll do that. And Karen McDougal no longer a, right. a witness anymore. All right, uh, Gary, thanks so much. Thanks, Thank you, Gary. Gary. Thank right. you. Have well, a great look, weekend. Bye. And of course, they don't. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.